Okay, so hi everyone again, and uh, welcome to the virtual uh, supplier showcase uh, for the third day of the spring conference uh, this year. Uh, so today we're gonna have uh, four companies with us. Uh, so I just wanted uh, for you to see them on the screen. Uh, now we're not gonna talk to all of them uh, at the same time, don't worry. We're gonna start with, uh, uh, with OwnFlash and Richard. Uh, but just so you know, uh, we do uh, have OnFlash, Finestra, ScreenCo, and EasyDam with us today. Um, and as always, I just want to mention that, uh, and I just want to thank our sponsors for uh, the Spring Conference with uh, ScreenCo Manufacturing and Quantix Building Products as main sponsor of the conference. So thanks again for that. And uh, now we'll start with uh, Richard. So everyone will have around 15, 20 minutes, and we'll take questions at the end uh, of each presentation. Uh, so we'll start with you, Richard. So if you can tell us a little bit more about HomeFlash. Absolutely. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, yes, HomeFlash is uh, proud to be a part of the uh, conference uh, today. I'm the president, Richard McLaughlin, and I uh, wanted to thank Fenestration very much for the opportunity to speak about uh, some innovation. Uh, as the world and our communities undergo dramatic changes, I thought this may be in a way appropriate to talk about some dramatic changes to our industry. And I'm talking specifically today about the installation of windows and doors, and more specifically about Silpan uh, integration. Uh, I wanted a special shout out to our office in Toronto that just opened up, and I wanted to welcome everybody. Uh, instead of a PowerPoint presentation today, I'm just going to be uh, introducing what I'm going to call Touch of Vision. I've got a number of samples here that uh, I'm going to introduce to everybody, and you'll probably recognize a number of them. But uh, as I said, it's gonna be more of a showing, show and tell than a PowerPoint presentation. Um, HomeFlash is very proud to be offering a new technology, something you've probably never seen before, but it's aimed at improving the window wall interface and more importantly, managing the water. Um, I've had a number of people that say, uh, show me a window installation and I'll show you a leak. And uh, that's, that's nothing has been more set out there. My background real briefly is about 25 years in the uh, home building industry, but more specifically, I was responsible for managing the customer care uh, with large track builders. At times we were building between five and 600 single family homes a year. I also have some expertise in manufacturing of the windows, installation, working with warranty providers. So I like to believe I bring a well-rounded background to the table on this. Um, I can tell you that that was the number one headache I experienced was building envelope failures and predominantly it revolved around leaky installation of windows. Uh, my philosophy is why invest in an energy efficient window if the installation is less than energy efficient and the home flash had taken a number of uh, key elements in our attempt to uh, manage the water and, uh, and and safely drain it away. Um, Recently, I've traveled across the country introducing Home Flash, and one of the key questions or points that was brought to my attention I found very interesting was, as long as my permits are being passed, as long as my pre-board inspections are being passed, I'm not going to change a thing. I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing now. And it was uh, very disturbing to me that uh, they took that, that, that position. And I kind of said to them, well, if you get caught speeding, and you know, do it because you know the police are not out there policing you and enforcing it, you're gonna to continue to break the law and place lives and yours and everybody else's around you at jeopardy. There are laws in place and uh, at HomeFlash, we try to encourage our builders to, uh, to build to a very, at least uh, minimum specifications. Um, the damages that I had seen as uh, part of the customer care division, again, with track builders, custom builders, far exceeded just the replacement of a window. It translated down to redoing entire hardwood floors. It translated down to mold remediation. And I can't begin to tell you the cost that we incurred from a legal capacity. And probably most importantly that I try to convey to the builder was, you spend millions of dollars attracting a sale. And now you're throwing your money out the window because you're failing to meet the minimum standards and have a window installation that meets those standards. The cost of market and when a buyer is pretty much lost uh, because you're not uh, taking care and attention to the installation of your window. Why do window leaks occur? Well, I think that's been discussed now at some of our uh, earlier technical meetings. 
but uh, I can tell you from, again, my experience, water wall, once water has breached the building paper, it enters into the wall assembly in a number of areas, uh, rim joists, deck nailers, step flashings. It always seemed to be revealing itself, and I'm talking about the water, at the rough opening. No matter what detail was applied to the rough opening at the head and the jams, we always saw the water presenting itself there because we believe that there is a, an air force going on there. Uh, talk about positive and negative airflow. The bottom line, we started designing a better sill pan flashing. The water got in, no matter what, we wanted to manage that water. And uh, I had taken that philosophy into the development of, uh, of home flash. Uh, continuing on, as I said, why do the windows leak? Um, sorry. Wanted to talk just a little bit about the A440. I know there's a lot of people that have expressed some interest, have added, asked a lot of questions on the A440. Once you read it, perhaps several times, it's not that difficult. Uh, with the incorporation of a good sill pan, you can manage the water that gets into your rough opening. Um, it basically gets rid of all that water that gets in. So I'm gonna move forward and talk a little bit about the, uh, the home flash, but before I do, uh, I'm just gonna introduce some of the products I've seen in my travels across the country. Uh, one of the most recent ones was uh, a builder was putting felt at the bottom of the window and believing that that was gonna provide a, a thermal break and drain all the water, uh, bad idea. Uh, I've seen other instances where they put a mid dam in they introduce OSB and nailing it on. Again, water we had discovered through our uh, investigations was getting to the inward side and couldn't drain out. Uh, again, water getting caught on a mid dam. They were trying to offer a, a, a support mechanism or a shim in this area, as well as this area. We saw this and the water was draining out. So just again, giving you some examples of what we're seeing in the industry. Uh, this is another example where there is a true back down versus the earlier sample where there was a mid down. This is a true back down, but we're introducing shims that are decaying and rotting. We're introducing fasteners that will rust and fall through. Um, an interesting uh, uh, point that I raised to a lot of builders when we're talking about seal pans is you've got a leaky roof. You go get yourself a pail out of the garage to catch the water that's coming in the roof. You introduce a bunch of nails to it, you fill it with foam. Is that what you would typically do, trying to capture water in a leak situation and drain it out? Not such a good idea. Again, we see all kinds of examples where they've introduced a membrane on a mid dam, not a back dam, and introduced again, OSB shim, something that's gonna rot and decay very quickly. For those that are familiar with OSB and the introduction of water, not a great idea. So moving forward, after showing you some of these things, uh, I'll introduce you now to the, uh, to the Home Flash product. I know we're under some time here, so I'm kind of rushing through it a little bit. Uh, the Home Flash product, quite simple. 100 foot rolls, waterproof membrane, and uh, hopefully I can get, give you a good shot at it here in the camera. What we've done is incorporated the same foam you'll find in a backer rod, but if you look closely, it's got a slope to it, six degrees from the one half inch down to nothing. We have laminated that on to a waterproofing membrane. The waterproofing membrane has uh, an interesting background. 40 years, it's been used to wrap lumber, taking it from Northern British Columbia to Florida, to New Brunswick, to California. Protecting the lumber was paramount for the manufacturers. We've taken that technology incorporated the same peel and stick waterproofing technology onto it, added a closed cell sloped foam with some peel and stick products. I've got one completed here. Case in point, we've applied it onto our rough sill. We have PVC shims that are applied to it in a very creative way we like to think. We have a peel and stick silicone release paper. On the upper side, we also have that on the bottom for application onto our sill plate. But the real technology also is another release tape on the inward side. And if you just excuse me for a moment, I'll take this piece and apply it to a representation of a sill plate. We remove the silicone tape. By the way, this comes in packages of 100 feet. 
We've removed all the silicone paper. We've applied it to, in the rolls, our sill plate. And again, the membrane is extremely durable. It has to protect the lumber across the country and internationally. We've stuck it onto our sill plate, providing us with a slope. We have all integrated one piece of design onto the interior. That peel and stick component on the interior side can be attached either directly to your rough sill plate or onto your vapor barrier, basically making that entire cavity of your wall one piece component. From there, you can take various kinds of PV shims that we supply and simply apply it in the areas of the sill plate that your manufacturer suggests. Typically mullions are one, but the load bearing, carrying the load of the window and more importantly, the glass. So it's that simple, peel and stick, sloped. Somebody had introduced or asked the question rather of uh, how do we deal with the, uh, the shim? The load of the window compresses, and I'll go back to my earlier sample just to demonstrate. Hopefully everybody can see this. We have that earlier sample. The load of the window is carried directly onto the shim. Sorry, I got it backwards, my television audience. The load of the window is carried directly onto the shim. The shim is compressed only through the foam beneath the shim, but the slope remains in place. Any incidental water coming down your trimmer studs or cripples are taken onto the slope. The window is carried on the shim. Your window, beg your pardon, remains level with the rough sill plate. In some cases, we've had builders that take the rough sill plate and slope it. What that does is takes the window and puts it out of plumb with the, uh, the window substrate. In terms of gusset material, uh, with the introduction of liquid applied membranes, which we've used in this example, a liquid applied membrane is used in the gusset corners, or you can use the more traditional peel and stick flexible uh, membranes in these corners. Again, that's the critical component right there is ensuring all that water is taken on top. No decay shims. We haven't punctured the membrane. It's all one piece of design. The shims compress, keep your window plumb level and square. Again, I refer back to my earlier example. I've got a leaky roof. Why would you try to capture water and drain it if your intent is to puncture holes through it? Fill it with foam, which I've seen time and time again. I'm a proponent to leave the rough opening cavity with no in further insulation than what you see here. And there is some thermal benefits to the closed cell foam that you see here with Home Flash. I'm gonna move on a little bit to why we see window leaks because I like to share these uh, little bits of knowledge with the industry. During my time as a warranty uh, provider to the track builders and builders alike, we discovered that the introduction of smart boards with the window the framers were trying to get the board flush with the exterior side of the frame. What they didn't realize is by hammering and forcing that down, they were shearing the flange off of the frame. We discovered this doing a water test. So we knew that water was getting into the ROs and we knew this was one of the key culprits was getting the trim around the windows with a flange mounted window, mind you. Doesn't happen with a box insert style, but we noticed that was occurring. Water was breaching in, no matter how the water got in. And this is just one example. We wanted to catch the water at the sill and drain it out effectively, easily, and simply. And that are some of the cornerstones of the development of Home Flash. With a little more detail behind the Home Flash, we can white label it. And we've got builders that are putting their brand on it, but probably the most interesting effect of taking the home flash in our membrane and branding it was safety code officers were discovering when they saw that they knew exactly the detail to be expected within the wall, within the sill pan. Um, one of our biggest challenges today with the integration of a sill plan or elevating this particular detail is we need to get safety code officers to inspect for this. Uh, just by putting a simple membrane down, OSB shims and back dams, uh, our tests on insulating the wall with a sill pad, we've got some very interesting results. 
uh, we had water still cascading back onto the interior. And we've done a whole host of tests with it. How and where to insulate that rough opening cavity? What does it do to water when it gets into that rough opening? And does a sill pan manage it properly? But uh, again, going back, uh, in my opinion, we, we need to have uh, a more stringent attention to the sill pan, making sure that it does comply, making sure it does do its job. Simply seeing a membrane at the bottom of a window uh, isn't going to do it. Uh, we've got a number of tests. We're going to be moving forward with some tests with Red River Community College to you know, further emphasize how the water gets in the wall, where it comes out, and including cold weather uh, applications, which is another topic involving uh, peel and stick membranes. I'm not sure how we're doing on time, but I'm going to assume I'm, when I hear music play, I'm going to know that I'm getting punted. <laughs> it's okay. We still have a couple minutes, but just let you know we have a couple questions too already. So. Sure, I'll be happy to take some questions. Great. Uh, so you ready now for the questions? Yes, fire away. Great. Okay, so let's uh, let's start with that. So we have uh, John asking, uh, has any testing been performed on Ohm Flash? Yes, great question. I'm always expecting this. We like working closely with our uh, architects and engineering community. Uh, I've got them right here in my hand. Uh, we've done some tests in the past uh, with Exova, and I believe they've been recently bought out. Exova is an approved laboratory with NRC. We conducted a number of ASTM tests that fall under uh, the typical testing parameters for a waterproof membrane. One of those tests is the ASTM D779, as well as the 1970. So we've got uh, testing pedigrees under that, proving that our membrane is indeed compliant as a waterproofing membrane. Some of the other tests that I've yet to see any competitive product that we have uh, comply to, which is the ASTM uh, 283. I try to go through this really quickly. It's a test method for determining the rate of air leakage through exterior windows, curtain walls, doors, uh, pressure differential through a specimen. Uh, another test we did, again, the ASTM 30. 331, the standard mes method for water penetration, exterior windows, skylights, curtain walls, uniform static air pressure difference. And the last one is a 547. So anyway, I'm, I'm getting through these very quickly, but uh, to the question, yes, we've got a long pedigree of testing, uh, you know, under the ASTM standards. Okay. Hopefully uh, that answered. Well, he's, yeah, and he was asking more specifically, uh, well, for example, ponding testing. Do you know about that? I beg your pardon? He's e wrote punding testing. So I don't know, like maybe maybe he can reach out to you and and see. Uh, yeah, I'll be happy to take any inquiries. Info at homeflash.com. Absolutely address questions like that. And I know the uh, target is always changing. Code cycles are always changing. Um, but we try to stay ahead of the curve like our technology. We certainly uh, are wanting to stay ahead of the curve with any current testing that's available or yeah. requiring to be done. Great. So we have Kyle asking, uh, does Home Flash have any real life uh, data on long term loading, for example, creep effect on the foam slope sill while installing larger, heavier products? No, no, I'll be honest, we don't. Um, with the introduction of the CSA 440, since then, we've developed this product. We don't. I'm sorry to say, but, um, you know, we're certainly willing to discuss that. Great. Well, I mean, that's that's a good thing that uh, it's this feedback also that will uh, help you yeah. see what, what's what's needed out there. I always say I'm not Harry Potter. I don't have a magical wand. I don't have all the solutions. Again, we're dealing with moving targets a lot of the times, new innovation, new windows, uh, these types of things. So Home Flash, we don't sit here and pretend we're going to bring all the answers to the table. But based on what we've seen, what's taken place in the past historically, some of the challenges with membranes, uh, standing water, uh, checking your membrane and seeing, make sure it's uh, it's warranted for standing water is really critical. So we're all, we're always moving. It's always a target, and uh, we yeah. have an open mind to these things. Awesome. So we have Brock asking. Uh, well, first of all, saying great lo great looking product. Uh, he has two questions. So how how to cut the home flash material uh, to length on site, and does the base that come in a different width? So two by four, two by six, two by eight wall. Uh, the foam base, I believe, is referring to for a two by four wall. We simply remove the inward side of it, and I'll go back to my uh, component. So, if you rather than the two by six, you have the two by four, uh, we're just simply cutting away that excess component. Anything beyond the two by six wall, 
we do have the ability to expand our phone to encompass that. Uh, but in terms of a two by four, we just removed that. That was okay. one of the questions, and I'm sorry the well, other and, was... uh, the other one is just how, how do you cut it? How do you cut it uh, oh. to length on site? A very sharp uh, utility knife, and the foam is easily cut. The membrane is cut on site per opening. Uh, on the Home Flash website, homeflash.com, we have videos for the installation. We also have some uh, handouts, some printouts. But again, again, you cut it six inches beyond your rough opening on either side. Uh, and again, the video does a better job or our paperwork, removing only that portion of coupon that you don't need. It folds into the rough opening from, from trimmer stud to trimmer stud, but the skirting extends beyond the trimmer and cripple. Okay. Uh, and again, I apologize if I'm not doing a, a good job here demonstrating, but our website, uh, I believe has some great videos, very easy to install. Um, our biggest sales force and success bar none has been the framer. Why? They don't have to worry about primer. They don't have to worry about getting all caught up with the peel and stick style. Uh, how do you slope the sill? And all of those mechanisms that are typically known with the, the traditional way of creating seal pan, that is not a problem here. This, we're doing a home with about 25 windows in it in an hour and 15 minutes complete, very quick. So we have two or three minutes and we have two questions. So I'll go through them uh, quickly. Uh, Don's asking, do you have a solution for sliding and swinging door thresholds? We do. We've taken the same membrane, the same testing pedigree, but instead of the slope foam, we put on a one eighth inch foam. Okay. So it acts like, uh, for those that may be familiar with it, prior to walls being lifted, exterior walls, there is a bed of foam applied or a, a, uh, a skirting of, of, of foam applied beneath the exterior walls. We've implemented that same foam onto our membrane. So when the threshold of the door sits on the foam, it compresses it. Very difficult to get water under a door. And I'm open-minded to hearing some solutions, but creating a slope on a door is difficult. But what we have discovered is by stopping the airflow with a gasket has eliminated the water penetration. Okay. Um, in short, thank you. Great. So we have uh, Eddie asking for a last question here. Uh, he's uh, mentioning, I've seen your products on job sites in Calgary. Uh, is there a minimum temperature that home flash products can be installed uh, on site? There is no minimums. Uh, the, the adhesive strip on the back is very aggressive. We have that being applied in minus 25 degrees on a clean, dry surface. Okay. The liquid applied gussets can be applied again, long as they're warm, can be applied again in very cold temperatures. Um, again, going back to my background in the 25 years, I don't like having the labor force out there in temperatures colder than minus 15. Why? Because the, uh, the installation suffers, the quality of installation suffers when you have an installer out there freezing. But in terms of the product, to answer the question, uh, temperature is irrelevant. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, that's it for, for today. Is there something you wanted to mention before uh, you leave us today? Maybe your contact info and... Uh... Yeah, feel free to reach out with any questions you have at uh, info at homeflash.com. I'm going to be giving away 25 home flash kits. Comes with the door flash, comes with 100 feet of, the, uh, of our sill pan flashing, all of the shims necessary. Uh, we're giving away 25 of those. So if you are the first 25 emails to come in with good questions, um, we'll be uh, making arrangements to get you a, a full kit. And again, we opened up an office in Toronto, so we're very excited about the opportunities out, out east as well as here in, in Western Canada. So thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks to you, Richard. And uh, thank you. now we'll, uh, we'll move to the Fenestra presentation with uh, Jeff Gugovsek. So we'll just wait a second to see Jeff. Okay, you're on. Okay, thank you. How do I share my screen now? So with the share screen uh, button at the bottom. Of the yeah, screen. that's the problem, right? Okay, I'll get there. Um, yeah, share the screen. Take this one. Here you go. Coming guys, won't be too long. It's okay, it's logistics. Yeah. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, we can see you have a, a nice uh, background. Yeah. So we'll enjoy that for now. That's <laughs> it. I'm going to cut it right away. There you go, guys. You see my screen? Yep. Okay. Let's start that. So, okay. uh, hi, everybody. Thank you for being there. Uh, today, I'm going to talk to you about Finestra Purchasing Co op. Um, I'm going to give some explanation as much as for uh, membership and as much as supplier. So um, I don't know who is on is on the meeting right now, but uh, I think I can answer all your questions. So it won't be a long presentation, short and compact. That's why I see it. Okay, why Finestra? Well, I think we're better together. Um, as you know, we're fighting every day against uh, bigger, bigger companies and all this. And, and uh, our independent uh, m fabricators and manufacturer members um, come together to, yes, share some, some rebates on, on their volume together, but the, the, all, all volume together, but also to, to, to network, to make friends everywhere in Canada and meet people that, that their, their business is really like like their own so uh, lots of time we feel uh, lonely and we think we're the only one having this problem so you know, grouping ourselves together makes a big difference um, so Finestra who's Finestra? Finestra members are all across Canada as you can see there um, we've got suppliers and members across Canada uh, they're all independent window and door fabricators uh, only. So, um, like I said before, they all have the same same issues, same challenge every day. So, uh, in, in this uh, difficult time with the COVID, it was great to be together to to share good practices during those difficult moments. And our, our, our co-op is doing really well right now, uh, going out of the, the, the crisis and really fast. So we're really happy that we were regrouping ourselves, we grouped. Um, uh, last year, that was 2019, in sales, our members represent more than $600 million altogether across Canada. Uh, almost two, Million square foot of square feet of manufacturing facilities, uh, offices, almost two hundred thousand square feet of offices and showroom, more than three thousand employees, and just to say, all the membership, all the members are in by invitation only. Yes, we're a, we're a, a co-op. The co-op is owned by the members. And uh, together, we try to find the best fit uh, for the membership that's going to bring uh, value in the co-op and that the co-op will bring value to them. So that's where, where we're looking all the time. We're right now 40 members. As you can see, uh, good, uh, good, good fabricators, well-known, uh, like I said, across Canada from coast to coast, even in Yukon. So uh, yes, we're well represented. So uh, 40 members um, and we want to grow. We want to grow uh, uh, in all part of Canada. So uh, we're open for business and to bring new people in. So we have 28 supplier partners, uh, also good, good suppliers. Um, well known also, so uh, you know, almost uh, the best in each category is there. So uh, 28 partners that are really happy to be part of the group um, because they, they, they got, you know, uh, they can grow their business inside the group uh, with less uh, expenses. For our fabricators, our members, it's, uh, we have a nice uh, group rebate programs. Uh, we negotiate um, um, for, you know, only once for everybody. We don't do prices. We don't work on prices. We, 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 we work on uh, rebate uh, 
rebate, volume rebates. Uh, we don't want to work on prices because we believe that um, I've been a sales representative all my life too. And for people who does that, we know that we can, we can easily know the price of what, what our, our you know, prospect customer will pay. So we don't want to bring the, the price of the street down by, you know, being together. And who knows better than the fabricators in, in their locality, their location, if, if, if a supplier is competitive, if price is competitive and, and the, um, the terms are competitive. So uh, we leave that to members and suppliers to negotiate together. Uh, the only thing we negotiate is a program rebates on uh, the volume of our group altogether. We do a lot of networking. You'll see a little bit further that we got events every year that our, you know, our uh, members are and suppliers are participating. And uh, yeah, we believe we got true partner and supplier. Um, these people are there to help, and we've seen it in. Uh, during the COVID, we had meetings with all our suppliers, our preferred suppliers, uh, every week to know if delivery delivery was there, if uh, they had uh, supply also on their side, and to feed our our members with information. So that was that was really helpful for everybody. Why the suppliers are joining? Well, they, 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 the market share share growth is an objective. Uh, all our suppliers asking ourselves, our sales group to uh, bring their business, uh, you know, higher and, and, and growth in their business. And that's what we're trying to do. Um, our members usually, a new member takes about two years to transfer uh, a lot of purchasing from outside the group, inside the group. And our suppliers have the chance to talk to them and meet with them. Uh, what we ask for our members is to and receive a call uh, for oh, okay sorry it's now my part i think it's richard can you close your mic yeah we'll, we'll fix that okay so yeah the uh the the, the it can grow inside the group and like i said our members uh when it makes sense for them are transiting their purchasing to our uh, supplier members so suppliers partners uh, less customer acquisition costs because yeah, the, yes, there's a cost for uh, suppliers to be in. That's a, a rebate program. So, but we have to earn it. So, if they base their rebate on on growing on, on growth, then we have to earn it to get it. It's not like a price that uh, sometimes we give, and I've been there before on promise, uh, and promise are not there at the end of the year, and we still get good prices, but when it's rebate at the end of the year for the group uh, volume, then we know we, we, we have to earn it. And that's what suppliers like too. And they got sales support from Fenestra. We're working all the time to make sure that our members get in contact with our suppliers and suppliers get in contact with our members. And we facilitate that. And I would say as a general manager of the group, my role is that facilitate transaction between between members and suppliers, and and uh, that's what we do every day. And, uh, there's a different testimonial that we were given by our suppliers. One of them is that uh, being part of Finestra is like having a second sales force. Uh, so so members, yeah, members uh, positively influence the others. We meet, like I said, uh, two times a year. And also we have a website where they can ask for help. They can ask for, uh, for uh, advice to the other members. They get in contact together all the time. And like I said, they can always call me and I'll put them in contact with the right person. We got, like I said, two events per year. Um, we got the AGM. Uh, it's completely bilingual. Sorry today for French people. I don't have part in French, but I'll be really happy to help you if you need uh, info after the presentation or in the next few days. 
so what we do at the uh, AGM is not networking. Um, when I, I joined the group in 2012, I was really uh, surprised when I saw that we had a one hour session of best practices, you know, sharing. So members were sitting together in different tables uh, and, and sharing best practices. Um, lots of time the, the question we had at the session was, what did you did today for your organization that was a great move? Uh, the second one was, what, what did you did uh, this year for your organization that was a really bad move? And also, what if you have all the resources uh, what would you do for your organization this year? And, and, and that was always, it's always great meetings. Um, like I said, I was surprised that that was happening when I joined the first time. Uh, but now uh, it, it, it's, it's, it went from one hour session plus another uh, half an hour of, of sharing to the group what different uh, small groups I've found. And now it, we're all together, it, we're at three, three hour and a half. And uh, they really like it. It's a big part of our AGM. At the AGM, we also have uh, some presentation from, from some of our uh, suppliers. And yes, we have good time for sure. And uh, we take the time to, to be to, together and enjoying it. Enjoying it. So uh, too bad this year, uh, the AGM was supposed to be uh, in, in Banff um, at the Fermont. It was supposed to take place uh, like every year in September, but we did postpone it in 2021, same place. So uh, we'll be there. We also have what we call Advantage Acceleration. Um, that's, uh, that's an event that we call for suppliers. Uh, this event every year in February takes place in, in Toronto or Montreal. Uh, why we chose those two, two cities is that uh, they're almost the only one in Canada that you can fly direct from, from, from everywhere in Canada. And also that it's easier to, 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 to go in and out because we, we make the uh, advantage near, near the airport, uh, as near as we can see the, 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 the plane going up. So. Uh, it's uh, it, it, that's why we do that. Usually we do uh, it's on a two days event and the supplier plan tour. We choose a supplier in the region we are and we do a plan tour. Uh, that's really appreciated for, by members. Uh, we have training session for what we call next generation. So uh, we ask our members to send their uh, their their you know the, the most uh, what they think is going to be going to be replacing them as at the, um, at the uh, management of the, of the company. Uh, so they come to have uh, some training in different uh, topics that members choose every year. And we have our, for again, for our supplier, a speed networking uh, session that's, uh, that you can see at the bottom on the right, uh, different boots and uh, members are sitting down and suppliers goes one after the other to visit them and they have like 15 minutes to talk about their, their, their products, their, their services. And also uh, they meet at night for a supper. And uh, so it's a supplier event that, that we organize every year. So two events a year uh, we do for our members and suppliers. How does Fenestra work? Uh, well, question that's uh, frequent, frequent frequently asked, sorry. Uh, am I required to only buy from Fenestra suppliers? No, it's not mandatory at all. Uh, only if it makes sense for, for your organization as a member or for, for the co-op, then, then you should try to, to transit your purchasing to our uh, Fenestra suppliers, but it's not mandatory. Only if it makes sense for your organization. How are the rebates passed on to me? Well, every year, uh, I would say three times a year, you will receive money directly in your bank account under rebates. Uh, how does it work? Well, uh, you receive the rebate in, in pro rata of your purchasing to, to each uh, supplier. So for example, if a supplier is giving us 4% at, at a certain level of the group and we, we do obtain it, 
And if you bought a hundred thousand from that supplier, you will receive four thousand dollars or four percent. So everybody equal, one member, one vote. Uh, and, and if uh, there is a bigger one who bought a million from that same supplier, he will receive four percent of a million, not more, not less. So everybody equal. Like I said, it's a co-op. How are sub preferred suppliers chosen? Well, we got members coming for different product category. Uh, it's always company made of uh, what, three, four members uh, with interest in that category. Like for example, if we're talking glass or, or coating or so that's different company that really we call when we need uh, and get together. And what we do is we look at the category we need, uh, we negotiate with the, with the suppliers, then uh, we, we have a supplier's proposal. We go to the uh, members, uh, the company, and uh, uh, then if it's accepted and, and it's a go ahead, we present the program to, to the members and it's rolled up. So that's the way we, we do often it will work. The question also frequently asked is, uh, is there a cost to be a, a member? Yes, there is one. Uh, there is two category of membership. One is what we call associate, and the other one is member owner, or the member owns a share. Like uh, say, uh, it's only one member, one share, one vote. Um, different cost uh, for that. I would say it's minimal cost and uh, ready to discuss with you people if you want. Uh, you will have my my uh, you will have my uh, coordinates after the meeting. And you can call me or email me, and I will, I will give you that. Um, these are the uh, the coordinates, so you can write to me at gfk at finistry dot co op, and um, um, I'll give you my number and everything. We can talk about it. Just to say, I'll get uh, sorry, don't get dizzy. I'll get back a couple of slides. Uh, the AGM and the Advantage, all the costs are covered. So the membership fee is usually uh, equal how much it costs to come to those events. Uh, that was uh, that was a, a the fee were decided by the members because they want to have a, as many as possible members present because we have decision to take. And like I say, joking to to members that don't come, don't worry. We gonna drink the fees you pay. No, don't worry. The other people will. So, uh, so that's Finestra, and uh, that's it. We're ready to 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 to, to hear from you guys. So, uh, if you want to hear about the membership and how it works and uh, what you can get, we also have finishing with that what we call a, a rebate calculator. That if you uh, you, you give me uh, you know I, I give you the the the, the suppliers and you give me the, the amount of money you bought from these guys and I will be able to give you how much rebate you would have received uh, the year uh, the previous year so that's Great. it awesome so we do have time for a little bit of questions uh, we already have one here so don't hesitate uh, if other people want to ask question to uh, JF if not you can always you know, write him an email or call him uh, for uh, future questions. We have Dave asking here, uh, how do you answer, uh, ensure your members abide by the antitrust principles? Well, we do the same thing as Fenestration Canada. We have an antitrust policy yeah. and we make sure that, uh, you know, we don't talk all together about something. Uh, yeah, and I think- Prices it's, about, you know, all this. And it's, impor it's important to understand too, as a, purchasing group yeah like you know like you're under these legislations too as a person it's not you're not an association you're not so i i guess we maybe you could take a couple of seconds here to explain you know what's the what's the difference because personally i i he, i um i get this question a lot okay so is fenestra like fenestration canada or what, what's different so okay maybe get, yeah maybe it's a good occasion for you to i think i think we don't uh, to compare the two organizations we're more, uh, you know, a compliment, you know, from each other. Yeah. Uh, we don't do the same. Like Fenestration Canada, don't do, don't do rebates. That's not your, mm -hmm. your mandate. And we don't do 
uh, you know, codes and uh, codes analysis, and, and we 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 bring our our people to to Translation Canada. So yeah, we actually uh, work together a lot on these on these yeah, things. So okay, exactly. And yeah. you were at a last advantage, by the way. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Because we need to, to to work together all the time. So that that's For okay. Sure. We don't do the same thing. Um, how it works, like we never talk about prices because we don't we don't have the prices. We don't know. That's between member and and suppliers. So we don't know that. Uh, for the rebates, we never give the the rebates uh, when members ask. So we don't want the the, the members to to negotiate their, the competitors of our suppliers using that. So we never mentioned the amount, our members knows how much in, in, in average, how much rebate they receive a year, but specific to each suppliers, they don't know. Only the uh, committee members of the, uh, yeah. the category knows, but they, they, they sign any well, let, let's just financial you have, agreement. So, yeah. You have principles in place to make sure. Oh that, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. So we have a, a question here from someone uh, who wanted to stay anonymous. And uh, uh, so the question's for you, of course. Uh, so he's saying, my company is valued in the top three uh, of windows and door manufacturer in Canada. How will I leverage my association with Fenestra when I know all suppliers that you have partnered with? Uh, just trying to understand how Fenestra could be beneficial. Well, sometimes it is not, and this is true if, if you're uh a big organization that you know and too big then you're not you're not a fit for for our group our group is targeting uh small to to medium uh fabricators like you've seen those guys in there uh so we i don't think a, 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 you know the third well, bigger in canada won't be yeah. a fit well as, as you said also you have your uh, calculator there so they could yeah. count yeah. to you and see yeah. Uh, we have Michael asking, uh, how do you get invited to become a supplier member? Because you said it's usually on usually we're at Fenestration can uh, win door, but we we're not this year. But uh, so basically, they can invite themselves to talk with you, right? To That's talk with me, and the only the only uh, mandatory, uh, I would say, uh, to get in for a supplier is we have at least to have one member. That buys from you. Okay. At least one. So. Okay. And we have uh, Samuel asking uh, Do you have a limited player's amount uh, by type of supplier within Fenestra? Yes, we try to limit that. That's okay. right. So you just try to if, limit if it. If all the, all the suppliers in the same category are part of our suppliers, there, there's no no benefit for them. So, yeah. But do you, have, do you have only one per category or do you have like no, we, we the members asked me ask us a couple of years ago to have at least two. Okay. Uh, in case of a problem with one, they can supply somewhere else. Yeah, makes easily. Sense. So yeah. Okay. So well, uh, thanks for the presentation. That was great. Uh, we got a lot of questions here. Uh, just make sure you reach out to uh, to uh, JF here if you have any questions. And uh, JF, anything to add? No, nothing. Thank you for your time. Awesome. So uh, now we'll move to uh, screen co manufacturing uh, and Jennifer Small. So in a couple seconds here, just uh, give her time to come in. Hi, Jennifer. Hello, how are you? Good yourself. Good. Great. So uh, you know now uh, we we all know like I think people know about screen co and if they didn't before this conference, I think we said your name maybe uh, thirty times uh, <laughs> as a main sponsor. So uh, I don't think we need uh, tons of introduction here. Uh, but so I'll just uh, let you start with your presentation. Okay, thanks, Stefan. Thank you, Fenestration Canada. We're really happy to be here. Really big supporter of FenCan. And uh, I'm going to be sharing my screen, which is this one. Here we go. Can everybody see my screen? Yes, it's working. Okay, perfect. So I'm just going to give you guys a little bit of. Uh, of a presentation that we've prepared. Talk a little bit about ScreenCo and where we came from and our history. And then we're gonna showcase some of our products. So uh, just to give you a little history of ScreenCo. So ScreenCo was founded in 1979. That's over 40 years ago. 
it was three friends that got together and uh, basically set up a roll form machine and started to roll form screen frame. They learned from the other players in the market at the time. And they started to roll form screen frames. They started to assemble window screens and shortly thereafter, sliding patio door screens. In 2001, the three gentlemen were of retiring age and decided to divest of the business. Eva Reiterband, my mom, who a lot of you know as the first woman president of Fenestration Canada, and myself uh, purchased the, um, the business. And we were in this original facility on Penn Drive in Weston, Ontario. There's my old uh, Honda minivan in the driveway. Uh, we purchased the business in 2001. In 2006, we happily left Weston, Ontario and moved up to Concord in our current headquarter facilities. Uh, we relocated here because really it's the center of a lot of window and door manufacturers in Ontario. And we have a complete line of products available. We uh, manufacture window screens, patio door screens, roll form screen frames. We evolved our lines to manufacture custom roll formed uh, steel and aluminum profiles. And basically we have a warehouse full of stock product available just in time for anything related to screening and screening products. 2009, we opened distribution in Calgary uh, we basically uh, established in Western Canada to service the Western market, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and BC. And we also have a complete line of products that's evolved over the years. What began as only distribution, developed into patio door screen manufacturing, then window screen manufacturing, most recently roll form screen frame manufacturing. We have custom uh, roll formed aluminum and steel profiles available there. And again, an entire warehouse of uh, stock screen products available. In 2016, we expanded to the U United States. We felt we needed a presence there and we purchased uh, Illumeral. Illumeral was a company owned by a gentleman who was also ready to divest of his business. He was of retiring age and uh, him and I had spoken for many, many years, Mark Desuardi. And uh, in 2016, I acquired his business. It's our largest screen co facility. It's 50,000 square feet. It's in a little town of Sheboygan, Wisconsin, one hour north of Milwaukee. And there we produce a full line again of screen and roll form products uh, for the Midwest market. In 2008, we acquired Group Promax in Quebec City. Uh, we expanded to Quebec. We needed a presence in the eastern part of the country. We have a complete line of products now available there. Uh, most recently, we are manufacturing window screens. We manufacture very high volume patio door screens there, roll form screen frames, reinforcement channels, and a complete line of window screen products. So as you can see, we have, um, we have manufacturing locations across Canada and the US. We've also established a distribution network through uh, high-tech glazing in BC, Waring Williams in Winnipeg, All Glass Parts in Edmonton, and most recently Sullivan Hardware in South Florida. So we've really tried to uh, expand our product line all across North America. Here's a map of all of our locations. And uh, since our, our small location in Weston, we've come a very long way. So a little bit about our products. Uh, screen frame manufacturing is sort of the core business. It's uh, where it all started. Uh, here you have a picture of a screen frame coming off a roll former. Uh, and we manufacture many different types of screen frames for any type of application. The complete line of window and patio screen accessories uh, anything people are looking for, for replacement parts or to support their new product development, that's our area of expertise. We stock uh, Pfeiffer screening products and uh, we're able to ship just in time direct from any of our warehouses. 
We have custom tooling capabilities where we can uh, develop any type of tooling for any type of roll form frame. We've made reinforcement channels. We've made products for other, other markets outside window and door. So we have a full, full range of capabilities to manufacture any product that can be roll formed. Here is some, some samples of some of the shapes that we've developed over the years. Sill tracks, uh, stainless steel products, um, reinforcements for vinyl windows. Uh, we've made all kinds of uh, cladding profiles. So we have a full, full capability for both design and manufacturing. Mesh, obviously, if we, have, we are in screening products, we have a full line of mesh products available. And not all of them are listed here. So if there's any type of mesh for specific projects, we've sourced uh, different types of mesh over the years. Munton bars, which are um, available in all different types of shapes and profiles. We stock many and we can source many. We, uh, we have key partnerships in those areas. Window and patio door screens, obviously a large part of our business. Made to order, just in time, how you want it, uh, labeled by lot in bulk, uh, purple if you need. <laughs> um, we will make window screens. We've had many different types of, uh, of requests over the years. Uh, funny shaped screens for custom projects. We're really open to anything related to window screens or patio screens. And one of the things we really are proud of is that we continue to innovate uh, in the screening products market. So um, most recently we've developed a uh, spring-loaded corner system. It's available in a 5 16 profile. There's no visible hardware. You can see the, uh, the hardware is, is embedded in the corners. So this replaces your traditional Compression springs, it improves screen retention. The handles are built into the corners. Very uh, aesthetically pleasing product. We try and develop new products that are aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing because screens tend not to be aesthetically ple pleasing historically. So, um, so this was one of our most recent window screen developments. Many of you have heard about the one screen. The one screen was developed many years ago. Uh, here's some close up pictures of some laminated one screen product that looks really nice with a wood window. Uh, very easy to assemble, no punching, no drilling, cut the bar, put the corners together and you have a, a complete screening system. Nice thing is this screen can be placed on the inside for a casement application or it can be placed on the outside for a, um, for a slider or a single or double hung application. So it's really one frame for all your windows. It's available in two different flange sizes, depending on your window system, so, um, so that there's no light shining through around the edges. Patio door screens has been since the acquisition of Promax uh, in, in major development for us. Uh, we have over 10 different styles uh, available of patio door screens. Here's some samples of some of the handles and the, and the different profiles that we have available. Our Evolution Series is our most uh, recent modern patio screen. It's really a very flat profile, uh, very modern to match current trends in, in architecture and building and, and in, in door systems. It's really avail it's available in two different widths. It's available either at a miter or a 90 degree corner style. It's available with nylon wheels or, or steel wheels. Really, it's your door, your way. Any way you would like us to build it, we will make it. You can have a flushman handle. You can have an external handle. It's available from all our locations uh, this year. And we're really proud of this, of this store. Uh, and, and we're really proud about how it, it slides. It slides extremely smoothly. And I'm actually going to... Um, switch the view to, to Jamie there, who's, um, who's going to share her screen. Can we share your screen, Jamie? I don't see her on the call. I don't, I don't I know. I can see her on the webcam, but she's got to share her screen. Oh, maybe I have to stop sharing mine. Hold on. Let me do that. Let me stop sharing my screen. 
can get there. Okay, stop share. There we go. Okay, can we okay. share our screen over there so we can actually see how it slides? Sure. So we'll just uh, just stop your your own. I'll stop your own. Well, maybe stop your own video and then we'll have her uh, full screen. Oh, there we go. Yes. Now we just hold on. We don't see you yet. We just see Craig's desktop. Let's see what's happening. What if we do this? So what do you want to see like the, the, the video? This? No, we just see the screen. If you go to your Zoom, click on your Zoom there. I see Jamie on the little video. Yeah, so is that what you want to see? Just this I video? See, yeah, I wanted to see that on the big screen. So, so, we'll, so we'll just stop sharing the, the other screen then. And uh, we'll have uh, Jamie there. So now she's uh, full screen. Oh, we just see her logo there. That didn't work. So what, what is it you want to see? Because right now. Jamie's webcam. Yeah, that's what we see. We see her operating the door right now. Okay. So as you can see, she's literally just pushing it with one finger. She's blown on it and it just slides really, really smoothly. It's a beautiful wheel system. Oh, there's another one. It's a beautiful wheel system. Um, really quiet, really nice in a modern flat design. Thank you, Jamie. Back to me. So that's our evolution series, our most recent uh, patio screen development. As I said, it is available now from all our locations. So we're pretty proud of that. And, um, and that's all I have for you guys today. So please contact us, info at screenco.com, info at screenco.ca. Uh, our four manufacturing facilities are listed there. You can go to our website, uh, reach out to us and we'd be happy to give you some more information. Perfect. So we do have uh, two questions uh, that are kind of in the same uh, same thing here. Just give me one second. I'll just do this. Okay. Uh, so we have uh, some uh, anonymous one, uh, wanting to know if you manufacture retractable screens for folding doors uh, that can go up to 30 feet uh, in length and 10 feet in height. No, we don't uh, manufacture retractable screens. So, okay, so that was the the other question too. Do we have do we have more questions uh, about the presentation uh, online? Because the both questions were about re retractable. Um, just do this. Here we go. So I don't see any more questions. Uh, I wanted to know, like, you said. You said when you, you, you open all your manufacturers and you said that the one in the U.S. is the biggest one. So do you manufacture all your products at all your uh, different manufacturers or uh, do you have specific, uh, specific products out of each places? A lot of our products are manufactured um, in all our locations and others are distributed amongst locations. Okay. But the products are available across all eight okay. facilities. Okay, uh, we have a question here. Uh, what's the max size on a uh, patio screen? <laughs> That's a very good question. I would say it's probably as as big as the length of the extrusion. We've made uh, we've made some fixed screens because they you, you get into the, a weight issue. But we've made some fixed patio screens as big as probably twelve feet by twelve feet. Um, but you can go pretty large. Okay. Uh, and we have, uh, well, we have just Laura mentioning that uh, she loves the evolution door uh, and she's telling you you did a nice presentation here. Thanks, Laura. <laughs> so uh, do you have anything else to, to add before uh, we go to the next presentation? No, just, uh, you know, reach out to us and we'd be happy to have a conversation. Perfect. 
So thanks again, and thanks again for sponsoring the the all conference here. And now we'll move to great. Now we'll move to uh, Michael uh, Chandron with uh, just a second. We'll just start his video here, and uh, we'll go to Michael with Easy Dam. Thanks, uh, thanks, Jennifer. Good afternoon. Hey, Michael. Here you go. Up to you now. Set up the PowerPoint here, slideshow. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you for joining in to uh, view our presentation about Easy Dam. I'm going to be covering uh, basically water management in a pan sill. So, what Easy Dam does is uh, or what we believe it is, is a solution for cold and warm uh, climate moisture management. So for a cold climate window install or universal installation system. So I'm going to talk about like Easy Dam itself, historical review, um, competitive advantages, performance gains, and risk mitigation. And then finally, with a summary, so there's a picture on the screen here. That's basically the system itself. And it consists of uh, two universal corners that um, go up the side of the sill uh, four inches. And it's all sloped. It all has a positive slope out to the outer uh, building envelope. So it's made from a, a PVC, uh, same thing that any vinyl window frame would be made of. And um, you can see the shims at the front and that's to support the, the windows itself. Now, if you have a uh, sill per se that isn't square, you can also put the shims on top of each other and counteract them until you get a level, a level position. So about Easy Dam. So we believe it's KISS product, like simple. I think everyone knows that phrase. And it's made of PVC, it's a back dam system, its slope is 15%, and the corners carry on that slope along the uh, side of the sill, sidewall. Uh, it's three eighths high at the back and slope forward to 16th. And basically, what that does is uh, it stops the capillary action that happens in, say, like a storm condition. Um, from water actually going over top of the dam. So the, uh, the product itself has been proven in the cell area uh, for moisture management, like successful moisture management. And what the system does is when you have it going up four inches on the side and then you fill in your uh, bottom sill at the back with your spray foam and up the side, is you can cre you create a ch chamber that the water can move around inside the system and it can push up the sides, but it's always going to uh, drop to the bottom of that chamber and then exit through your your uh, your sill onto the building envelope plane itself. So it protects from gradual water invoice uh, ingress. So what that means is in a window system on the sill. Uh, you'll get um, moisture that wicks up the side up to three inches and then the bead becomes too heavy of water and then it naturally falls back down. So that was the purpose of the corners and also being sloped out that it'll manage uh, gradual water ingress. And then also in sudden storm conditions, it gives the water some place to go inside that area and then again exit out at the bottom of the sill. So Easy Dam is a guaranteed system and it's uh, backed by a 10 million per occurrence uh, insurance policy not to fail for any building, even if um, over time, say you may get a leak from a door or window, maybe there hasn't been proper maintenance done on it, but our system protects um, through the entirety of a building's life 
uh, that uh, you will not get water ingress into your structure, which causes rot and mold and damage as we've seen over the last number of years. Um, it has been third party uh, tested with an engineering firm with a modified ASTM E3, uh, E331 format. So with this test, um, we, we had uh, two sections that we wanted to test. Number one, we wanted to see how it would do without any spray foam actually installed uh, with the system. So before any water droplets actually came uh, into the other side of our system, it reached a uh, 330 PA. And the water that actually came in, it wasn't coming in from the, uh, from the pan itself. It was actually coming in through the sides where there was some gaps before the spray foam went in. So it performed very well. And then uh, we took it to a category five level for five minutes after we had installed the spray foam and whatnot. And we had zero leaks uh, with that test. So this again is a diagram that kind of shows you a schematic of the system. Typically, uh, we recommend that you place the corner on the inside of the sill. You can draw a line in front of it and that gives you your, your, the installer, their point of installation in the sill, as, in the sill system. So uh, some builders have asked, you know, can we move it a little bit more forward because of conditions, whether it's in say a colder climate like Calgary, Saskatchewan, Ontario, where they, they'd like to get a little more installation value and they can do that. And there's room to do that. So you can have it right in the center um, or even a little more forward from that. Because the, the whole idea of the system is to build this chamber that gives enough room for water to um, navigate in the system. So here are some installation pictures. Uh, this was with a multifamily complex in Alberta here. And you can see the butterflies from the 3M go over top of the dam and both corners are installed. And this is a finished product. So our product itself works with any peel and stick. So it's not limited to one peel and stick. This one was done with the 3M product. Um, and really what our product is, is it's, it's, a, uh, it's a great add-on for window manufacturers and door manufacturers to add the product in as it becomes part of uh, a system for a window install that the, the window companies, you, you have no liability what, whatsoever. You, and same with the builder. So um, the trades itself, that we've had install it on different projects. They think it's the best system they've ever used. It's so simple and easy, takes no time to do it, a uh, few minutes, and then they have a, a positive slope in the dam and they don't have to tilt the sills, which is a lot of work and also hard to get a proper shimming system underneath the, the window itself. So a historical review on <clears throat> uh, window uh, pan failures. And I say window pan because generally speaking, windows and doors uh, are manufactured with technology that they don't leak uh, very often. So um, it's mainly the installation process and the dynamics of the pan that are, are allowing for these leaks. So. 95% of the time uh, with wall envelope failures is due to the windows and doors, the largest penetration in the building and are most susceptible to uh, leaks in that installation. So a little history on building paper. Building paper, we used it quite consistently almost up till mid eighties, nineties, early nineties. Um, building paper, had a unique quality to it that um, we never really took in account. And what would happen is over a period of time, the building paper at the back or the inside edge of the sill 
would curl and the same thing would occur on the sides, creating a natural back dam uh, that would only allow so much water to actually get through that. When we moved into synthetic building wraps, uh, you know, you'd lay the building wrap on, on top of the sill. However, synthetics never curl. So um, that was a, a large problem in Vancouver as they were the ones who really started using synthetics first. Uh, so it resulted in a, a huge number of failures. So after that, um, waterproofing, like waterproofing became like peel and sticks. And uh, we felt that, that was the solution. There's water getting in the windows, it was rotting it out. Um, but in reality, we still didn't have a sill that carried the dynamics to actually manage the water. It was waterproof, but if the sill was slightly sloped a different way, you'd get water into your wall system. So uh, then as we saw earlier, you know, we would put, uh, you know, strips of OSB in, in different locations to stop the water. However, um, you have a wicking action that's going on inside that area and the water was finding its way into the corners. So we still continued on with trying to figure out how to fix this problem. So existing window and door installation methodologies, uh, there's a few that um, I think really work. Uh, one is, uh, uh, you know, double rod and caulk, uh, caulking in the uh, um, inside and outside. However, it's, um, you're relying a lot on uh, the installer, the knowledge of the installer. There's a, you know, you're supposed to be serviced every five years or inspected. I've had a number of homes over the last 30 years. I've been in construction for 30 years and I've never taken off the uh, trim of my house to inspect it. It's just, it's, uh, um, people just don't do that. So what happens with that system is the caulking can dry out and crack or delaminate from an edge. And then again, you can have water coming into your, um, your pan area or your wall system. So like I say, it's really easy to install. It's a one cut system. You can use tin snips to cut the, the length of uh, strip. It's uh, the lowest cost uh, and footprint for shipping, distribution, warehousing for window companies, manufacturers, builders, whomever. Uh, it's the least expensive system comparably for products and labor. And what I mean by labor is there's also other installation methods like using uh, cedar shims uh, or, or cedar siding. Uh, well, you know, you can use that and then you put the peel and stick on and then you gotta figure out uh, how to level out your shims for the window support. But in reality, that's uh, quite a bit of work when, you know, easy dam is installed really within two or three minutes. And then the other process of the peel and stick, which is, required by code gets installed and spray foam gets installed around the window. It creates savings for manufacturers and builders. Uh, so what I mean by that is, you know, whenever a window company or builder or installers, engineers, everybody uh, has a failure, it takes up a lot of our time. And, you know, it's, it's really non-productive time that you have to go back and deal with it. And then there's, there's normally multiple people involved. So, you know, you're, those, those costs and, you know, if it gets into any kind of legal action or insurance companies, you know, the, the price just amplifies for even one window. I mean, uh, you, can, you can have costs of $2,500 to $5,000 uh, dealing with one failure. Uh, just with one window. Um, it's the only measurable financial guarantee uh, in our industry for water ingress where what I mean by that is, you know, we provide our insurance, we are guaranteed not to have water ingress or any water getting past our system. So 
what happens then is, you know, if, if there is a failure for any reason, um, you know, we, we, we employ and instruct the engineers to go out and look at it. Uh, you guys don't have to um, deal with any of that whatsoever. So it meets all the requirements for uh, window and door installation codes uh, for all states and provinces. It'll, uh, it'll work in any climate. Uh, performance gain. So again, faster installation, it's installed really quickly, generally a couple, three minutes. Um, the water management is full-time water management for all kinds of moisture uh, um, failures and whatnot. Once the foam is in and, it, and the units in it, it, it actually um, reduces noise pollution. A lot of people now in larger cities, the, the uh, condos are built close to highways and whatnot. So that's becoming a, a big concern out there. Um, zero maintenance, you never have to inspect it like five years with Ron Cock. Uh, installers and trades, uh, every single trade and a lot of framers, 25 years, we had one instance framer for a builder, they were trying out the product and um, he was super glad that he had this product in that house because it, he was building his own house and, and really just thought the product was so simple and made such sense. Then at the bottom here, there's a, um, there's a video with uh, Concord Comp Carpenter um, installing the system. And you'll see from that, it's, it's really easy, straightforward. Now, when he installed the system, he had put out a price there. Uh, but you know, from our point of view, uh, we, we believe in fair pricing. Uh, we want this product for not only, you know, protection of window manufacturers, engineers, builders alike, but you know, essentially it's, it's for the, the building owner or homeowner that they have that assurance that, and, and it's insured for the life of the building. So if, um, you know, whether it's the third owner of the house, they still have, they're still covered uh, with our system that uh, it won't leak. So it's really a, a final solution for water ingress and in windows and doors or the pan areas, rough opening. So just to finish off here, so risk, like risk mitigation summary. So it's, it's uh, super cost effective, really like from, you know, uh, from a, whether, whether you're a smaller manufacturer, larger manufacturer, um, even for an eight foot system, it, it would never exceed $7 US. Uh, and then um, zero liability to its suppliers, builders, uh, you, you become co-insured under our policy. Uh, reduced financial resources and production losses. So the costs in North America for window door manufacturers, builders, and everybody involved um, we believe it's somewhere in the neighborhood of $18 billion a year. And, and that's a lot of money and it's a lot of suffering, you know, for owners and whatnot. And, and it's hard. It's uh, in today's age with the electronic digital age and everything's on the internet and, uh, you know, you want to protect your reputations and, um, know that you have something in place that, um, will ensure that, that this doesn't happen. Uh, and, you know, this is a long awaited solution. Uh, I understand that the window manufacturing industry is looking for a universal system that they can attach with uh, or possibly attach with their products. Uh, I think it's uh, essential that the window manufacturers are involved in, in this product getting out there mainly because you know if if you're supplying a product for say 350 or 500 dollars say a three foot window um it's uh it's essential that you know that there's something going in with it with the installation that protects you uh, from liable or financial uh, position 
So I thank you very much for watching this and I can take any questions when you're ready. Uh, the other thing too is the, um, we have a hundred, we have a hundred units available. So if you order a sample in today, uh, we can get one out per company and you can use it to test it, try it out, uh, just kind of get to know it a bit. Thank you very much. Great. So we do have a couple, well, we have one question here. Uh, we have, uh, well, Dave uh, Goldsmith mentioning that he liked uh, the window that you presented. He said nice window. So I guess uh, it's his. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we have uh, Jane asking, are, you know, are you see safety, uh, do you see safety code official inspecting for a sale pan system that complies with national building code? or are inspectors simply looking for a membrane, a membrane only? Um, well, we've, uh, we did have our product reviewed in Calgary by the city of Calgary, the building code inspectors. Okay. And basically how the, the code shows right now is that you need either a sloped sill or you need a sloped back dam system. Okay. However, uh, there hasn't been any, uh, real codes that I know of for corners, slope corners. Okay. Um, they certainly like to see some sort of a corner install the plastic or PVC corner, but there really is no, no slope corner. So without a slope corner, a sloped edge, the water can still travel on the side. But yeah, they are looking for uh, this to be done. Are they inspecting it? I don't think so. Okay, we have another question from Al here. Uh, he's asking, can you explain how the insurance works? Who is covered? How is a claim made? Which engineer investigates? So basically um, how it's done is if there is a failure in the system, then you would, you would contact us. And then we'd contact an engineer in each location to go out and inspect it for us and make sure you know, that it wasn't installed backwards or things like that. But on the kit itself, uh, the, like I say, when, when it's say a company, like take, for example, um, Fenstra, I mean, say, say they're buying the product and putting it out to a number of manu uh, window manufacturers, then they become a co-insured uh, on our policy. So okay. you more or less get an insurance uh, copy of the insurance with your company uh, that you're co-insured with us. The other thing is, is on the kits themselves, also, yeah, they come in three foot, six foot and eight foot kits. And on the kit itself, it has a um, label that has a QR code so that the installer can easily uh, click on that code and watch a video of how to install it. Okay, great. Well, so that's the question we, we had for today. Anything else you wanted to, to add to the conversation? Um, well, like I say, uh, order a sample, touch it, you know, check it out. And if you want to test it yourself, you can. But like I say, uh, we did surpass the category five uh, level and they only left it on for five minutes because they basically said the house is, is gone okay. <laughs> at that point. So. Great product, share with everybody. <laughs> well, thanks for sure for uh, sharing the, this whole presentation today with us. Uh, that concludes our uh, supplier showcase for, uh, for today. I hope that everyone enjoyed. Uh, see you there, uh, see you all, well, not all, but whoever, uh, all our members who are manufacturers or suppliers within our association. Uh, the next meeting is the actual uh, annual general meeting. So I just want to thank uh, everyone uh, on the call today. I want to thank all the presenters. So Home Flash, Finestra, ScreenCo, and Easy Dam, uh, and our main sponsors for the conference, ScreenCo Manufacturing and Quantix Building Products. So on that, thanks again. Thanks, everyone. And uh, see you in the next few meetings. And don't forget the uh, what we have tonight after that at 4.30 Eastern time, we have the Fenestration Review Trivia Night. So that's our social networking event of the spring conference. So don't miss it. It's going to be pretty fun. Uh, and I hope you listened uh, closely to all the presentations because uh, during the trivia night, you'll have some questions to answer uh, about these products that you heard today. 
um, and there's a pretty good price to to win. So I hope to see you there, and uh, I wish uh, I wish uh, that you enjoyed the the seminar. Thanks again. Thank you, Stefan. Bye bye. Thank you. Okay, bye.